Hello there again everyone, I'm UXW Bill, and in today's video I'd like to share with you another one of my refrigeration related projects. Those of you who have been watching this channel for a while undoubtedly remember this dehumidifier. I picked it up off the curb, plugged it in, and soon discovered that the compressor had suffered a serious failure. And well, that probably would have been the end of it, only I knew that in the not too distant future I would be taking a class on small appliances with self-contained refrigeration systems. So rather than send this thing off to the scrapyard, I dreamed up a grandiose plan to try and revive it as part of a personal project within the class, and the instructor actually granted me permission to do so. How did I manage to do that? Well, it turned out that I had two different dehumidifiers with two very different problems. I had one with a blown compressor, but an otherwise intact and presumably functional refrigeration system. And then I had another one with a good compressor and an evaporator coil that had more holes in it than a Swiss cheese. As I found out when I brought this carcass, which was actually a dehumidifier at the time, into the class to practice my refrigerant leak detecting technique. Another student and I went over it and we discovered that it was pretty well hopeless even though it was still under slight positive pressure. I picked this up off the curb several years ago. I figured that it probably had some sort of a serious problem and it turned out that it did. But also figured that I could use the parts within it to keep other units alive. And as you can see this thing has given its all to keeping other dehumidifiers on the road. And since it happens that so many of us live in a world here on YouTube where instant gratification is expected and demanded, I won't keep those of you in the audience who are wondering if the transplant was a success waiting any longer than I have to. And if you know me at all, you'll know that that's, that's strenuous for me. <laughs> so let's take a look and see if we're ready to go here. We'll just make sure that we have all the ingredients to successful dehumidification, specifically a drip pan so we don't make a mess all over well, I guess it's the great outdoors. We could make a mess if we wanted to. But it just so happens that while I did not get a drip pan with this dehumidifier, and I cannot possibly imagine why someone would have kept that part unless they had it going into a floor drain and simply forgot about it when they put this thing out for the curb, as luck would have it, the key keeper has an identical model that's branded by General Electric, probably also made by W.C. Wood and Company, and since his is definitely draining into a floor drain, I figured he'd never miss the drip pan, so I shamelessly stole it from him, and I don't think anybody will care as long as we don't tell the key keeper, and I can keep a secret. I'm sure you can as well. So, uh-oh, I think I'm in trouble now with our drip pan in place. And I've made very sure that the float is suspended freely in the bucket, though I have reason to believe that the drain switch, uh, that the, the bucket full switch on this thing doesn't actually work. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see if any smoke comes out. The compressor's a little loud when it starts, but it definitely works. And of course there's the two-speed fan. So while this thing is getting into the groove of dehumidification, I figure I'm going to go over to the key keepers and steal something else, namely some zip ties, for reasons that will soon become evident when we take a look inside this dehumidifier. And you can see just the horrifying extent of the hatchet job that I did on its refrigeration system. As I'm sure you can see if you look very carefully, you can see that we're starting to pull water out of the air. Little droplets beating up there on the evaporator coil, starting to run their way down to the drip pan. This video has actually been waiting in the wings for quite some time because it wasn't actually warm enough, indoors or out, to give this thing a proper demonstration. As you can see, it's just sweating away merrily. And the damage done to the label back here is one of those interesting things that happens when I start using a torch of any kind. Let's just say the space in which I had to work was really rather tight. So I ended up getting that back panel a little bit warm. But I didn't burn through it and I certainly didn't ruin anything. So that's got to count for something. Yes, I actually signed my work because I'm a huge dork. I'm also pretty proud of the fact that this thing lived to tell about it. 
that's loud. A little bit of an intermission here. Apparently we have a frog somewhere in the flower bed. And just moments ago it cheeped. But we don't actually know where it is. All right, everybody, we're back after a little intermission there. And we're about to prove that beauty is, in fact, only skin deep. When we look at how I plumbed this compressor in here, there it is, all the details on it. I would say that's the 13th week of 1995 for the manufacturing date. Now, the hot gas line, which is right here, this was just as easy as pie to braze in there. Not a problem at all because it lined right up with the factory supplied filter dryer. And yeah, for reasons that'll become evident a little bit later because I have some still pictures to show you of what the old compressor looked like inside as well as what my vacuum pump oil looked like after pulling several vacuums and breaking them with dry nitrogen on this thing. Probably should have replaced that because there was definitely a burnout that took place, but I didn't have another one of them, and I wasn't real sure where I'd get one. And up there you can see that there's a process tube that's been crimped off. I actually cut that open so that I could purge the system with nitrogen while I was brazing everything together. Like I say, this went off without a hitch, apart from the fact that it's very, very sloppy. But hey, it's holding pressure. <laughs> Still works just fine. I had to add the capacitor that came with the compressor from the donor dehumidifier over here. But luckily there was just enough room to do that. Just ran a couple of zip-ins through the sheet metal and went with it. But the suction line was another story entirely. And yes, this needs to be insulated. Here you can see the service fitting I put in. When you're working with small appliances, you typically only have a low pressure side service fitting. And that's all there is on this. I thought about putting a high side service fitting in as well, but I didn't have any fittings of the appropriate tubing size and I didn't feel like butchering one in there to make it work. Besides, I can do everything I needed to do with just this one. But this was quite a story. I wanted to take the uh, stubs of tubing out of the compressor. I cut it off with a little bit to spare. There you can see that's the original line from the donor dehumidifier. I did the same thing over here and I thought, well, no problem, I'll heat that up and I'll pull it out. What I started to do, I started to burn through the tubing on the compressor and I was really making a pig's breakfast of it and I thought I'd probably ruined the whole thing. But then my instructor said, no sweat, just get yourself a bigger piece of pipe that goes over the circumference of the original, braze that on there, should go right in, and it did. I actually had another classmate help me with that because he was interested in working on it too. But then we came off of here, and I did this bend, did another bend, and that wiggly piece of tubing back there, that's actually factory original. <laughs> it looks terrible, but that's, that's what they did. And you can see where I also brazed that in. Some of the joints look better than others, and to be perfectly honest with you, my torch was probably set a little bit cold at the time, but... Everything's all wired up and ready to go, and it definitely does work. So that's the whole story behind reviving this dehumidifier. And again, it wouldn't have been worth it. Ordinarily, when something like this happens, it's a throwaway situation. But I had the parts, and I wanted to spend some time honing my skills. So I simply worked on it, got it back together, got it going again. And now I've got another dehumidifier in my arsenal, which will undoubtedly come in handy at some point. So thank you, as always, for watching. And certainly do feel free to leave a constructive comment if you happen to have one. Oh, and for anyone who happens to be wondering, this was originally a Refrigerant 22 system. And because we actually have Refrigerant 22 available in the lab, that's what I recharged it with instead of one of the drop-in replacements like R407C.
And here are a few video postscripts. First of all, this is the start of my suction line insulation. This is not the stuff I wanted to use by any stretch of the imagination. This is one of these foam noodle-like things that's mainly intended for insulating the pipes coming off of hot water heaters or going, going over like a cold water pipe that's running above a source of humidity like a basement shower stall or something along those lines. But it's all I could find, so it's what I'm using. I'll finish that up in the near future. It's got to go at least back that far to that opening where that tube runs out and comes in off of the evaporator coil. And of course I should probably get some sort of a grommet made out of rubber or something similar so that that doesn't actually rub in two, although I'm not sure it will. And I hasten to point out that was actually like that from the factory. There was no rubber grommet back there or anything else to protect that piece of tubing. So I might try to get something stuck in back there and maybe cut a piece of automotive fuel line and use it as a jacket around that piece of pipe so as to provide it a little bit of extra protection. I'll have to take the top cover off of this thing to run any more of my insulation, but that's where the project stands for now. And hey, it works, even if only as a proof of concept. And I'm pleased with that outcome.